It is party time. It is Thursday, which means we will get off the rails here on the Chad Prather Show. Welcome to Studio 22. We are in the mothership uploading the information that you need. I, uh, I'll tell you, guys, we, um, you know, just trying to make some heads or tails out of the world we're living in is getting kind of hard to do. Um, and so that's why I hope, I hope that you guys are uh, equipping your minds. I hope that you are preparing your hearts I hope that you are training yourself to think critically because you are the subject of some next level bullshit, guys. I mean, it is next level. Just the other day, Barack Obama, let me be clear, uh, he said he was very worried about something in our country. And, um, well, let's just let Barry say it himself. Will you play that clip for me, please? I'm an optimistic man. Mm Mm-hmm but I find myself falling into this space where I have concern about the country that they will inherit once I'm gone. Post-presidency, what about this country keeps you up at night? The thing that I'm most worried about is the degree to which we now have a divided conversation, in part because we have a divided media, right? So... I'm much older than you, Nate. You don't look it, though. Th- that's what I was fishing for. <laughs> Some ass um, kissing. But when I was coming up, you had three TV stations. Yeah. And people were getting a, a similar sense of what is true and what isn't, what was real and what was not. Today, what I'm most concerned about is the fact that because of the splintering of the media, we almost occupy different realities. If something happens, In the past, everybody could say, all right, we may disagree on how to solve it, but at least we all agree that, yeah, that's an issue. Now, people will say, well, that didn't happen, (laughs) or I don't believe that. And one of, I think, the goals of the Obama Foundation and and one of the goals of my post-presidency is how do we return to that common conversation? Mm. How how can we have a common set of facts? We may disagree on gun violence Mm. in terms of what the best prescriptions are. But we can't deny the data that right. says the United States has levels of gun violence that are 5, 10, 15 times more than other countries. I always love it when uh, people like that sit down for an interview. And when they're asked what is the biggest problem in our country, they start to complain about an entity, an institution, or a thing that actually made them, created them, gave them the platform that they now occupy, gave them the wealth that they now enjoy, gave them the status that they're experiencing, uh, gave them that opportunity to sit down and, and utter such nonsense. Barack Obama is a product of the divided media. They created him. He was a two-year senator. He was a city organizer, community organizer in Chicago. He was no one. He was no one until the media got a hold of him. And then the media made sure that he never failed. No matter what he did, drone strike seven countries simultaneously, no big deal. Drone strike a wedding, killing innocent civilians, women and children, no big deal. He was the first black president. He's not even fully black. (laughs) But we couldn't let him fail because he was the first president of color, right? He was... You know, he was the guy that had to succeed at all costs. The media made sure Barack Obama's ass always smelled clean. He's fresh as roses, man. Uh, Now, me, on the other hand, I come with some credibility (laughs) compared to that charlatan. Because I've said for 30 years, there's no way the world will survive with 24-7 media in the form of cable news networks because they'll start making stories up. They'll start turning it into entertainment. They'll fancify everything. They will make sure they sprinkle a little, you know, uh, blood and gore in the details so that you have to keep coming back and watching it. That's why when you go into the airport or the hospital, it's just on a loop, man, 24 news cycles, playing, 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 playing. You go and you go and you know, these old people's houses, man, they don't even know how the remote control works. It's just stuck on Fox News. It's just there. They get, they don't even know how to get it off of there. I'll call my mother on the phone. I can hear, I can hear Brit Hume in the back. 
I, I can hear, uh, you know, um, I, I can hear, um, um, you know, these guys, these talking heads, and my mom's like, I'm like, Mom, turn the news off. I, I don't know how. I can't get the volume down. <laughs> oh, I yeah. mean, she, listening to it on, on 60, bro. I went I went up north when I was back in the cannabis business, and I went and visited Pot Pirates as far off the grid as you can get. <laughs> Didn't even have Wi-Fi. Didn't even know what Wi-Fi was. Fox News was on literally 24-7. Yeah. Only thing they watched. Yeah. They're addicted to it, man. Yeah. They're addicted to it. And they play it around the clock. And so you you knew that this was, I mean, even at the age of 20, I knew this was going to be a problem. Now, here's my issue with what Brock had to say is when he's saying we used to have three channels. Now we got all these different channels. We got all these different talking heads and there's a divided media. So what he's saying is he wants to make sure that the script, the narrative is controlled, that they're all saying the same thing. They don't allow opinion or thought to get outside of the box because that could be dangerous if you thought something different from what the state is telling you to believe. So it's very Vladimir Lenin of his him in terms of his sentiment. Uh, and, and, you know, I want to make sure that objective journalistic integrity is maintained so that if I read a news story or listen to a news story, I don't know the opinion of the author or the, uh, or the journalist at the end of it that, because that becomes an opinion piece. And we've gotten into a lot of opinion pieces. It's hard to just truly find the news. So, you know, stuff like this, when, when he is a product, I mean, you know, the guy lives in a, in a, in a mansion on Martha's Vineyard. He doesn't believe in global warming. He doesn't believe in climate change. He doesn't believe in the rising elevation of the ocean's tides. He wouldn't be living right there on the coast if he did that. So the fact that he's going to sit there and tell you what the truth should be as it's reported by the media, well, the media would tell you that climate change is real and we need to do something about it or else we're all going to be dead by 2032. But yet he lives right there on the coast. So he doesn't believe the bullshit he's peddling. And that's just one example of what I'm saying. So, I, I, I'm, you know, th this whole thing is you better learn how to think critically because you have a lot of voices in your head, a lot, and you're bombarded with those voices day in and day out. And it's dumbed us down. I mean, you can hear the bleeding of the sheep, you know? You really can. Hello, Clarice. <laughs> Do you want to know what you look like with your good bag and your cheap shoes? You look like nothing more than a rummy little rube. How the boys found you in the tedious fumblings in the back seats of the car, and all you could think about was getting out, getting out, getting all the way to the FBI. Sorry, I had to go silence so the lambs on you. <laughs> you see a lot, doctor. But can you turn those high-tone perceptions at yourself? Yeah. Uh, what was your father? Was he a, was he a farmer? Did he stink of a lamb? <laughs> do you still hear the bleeding of the lambs? I do. I do. And all I can think about is getting out, getting out, getting all the way to reality. Mm. Man, we, we are, uh, we're in a mess, guys. We're in a mess. We're about to not have a country. We are uh, invaded at the southern border. We are overrun with illegals who have no intention of assimilating. Um, it's, it's, it's bad news. I just heard this. I, I, I'm hearing story after story. My friend Ben Berkham. He sends me videos. I mean, Ben, God bless him. I mean, those of you who follow him on social media, see his video clips. He's out there at three o'clock in the morning uh, filming and interviewing people coming across the border. He sent me a clip just yesterday morning. It's astounding. People coming from Africa coming across. I mean, they're, I mean he's literally sitting there talking with people from Senegal. Um, I, I, you you want to figure, figure out how that happens? Uh, they're literally being brought here. This is an invasion. This is the this is the systematic destruction of America that we're watching. Whenever you see the Durham report and you realize that uh, the Democratic powers, such as Barack Obama, knew very well that they were going to attempt to upend a duly elected president sitting in the Oval Office, and they were going to do everything they could to disrupt him from uh, leading the American people effectively. And they were going to do everything they could to make him look like a buffoon, make him look like a rapist, a misogynist, you know, a bigot, a racist. We know Donald Trump is not a racist. I mean, 
Donald Trump says some things off the cuff that just like every normal human being does that you go, oh, you could misconstrue and twist in all kind of different ways. But we could do the same thing with your words, your words. Don't be stupid. Don't sit up there like, you know, some pious ass in the, you know, on your tower of of uh, condescension and look down and, and think that everybody out there is some, you know, bigoted racist. Donald Trump dated a black woman for crying out, a hot one. He got the Rosa Parks, Parks Award, you know. I mean, Muhammad Ali loved him. He was the most rapped about dude in America. Good Lord. Every rapper wanted to freaking be Donald Trump. Give me a break. I mean, think about the things that Donald Trump did for the inner city communities. What he did for Jennifer Hudson's family. I mean, come on, racists and white supremacists don't do that. When I look at Donald Trump, I don't go, oh, white supremacists. But the media, the Democratic Party, and, and lawmakers in Washington, D.C., they forced you to believe that stuff. And there's people out there who still spill that shit all the time. I did my rant on Monday here in the studio about the problem with the black community. And I put it on social media, and people kept saying, uh, people kept saying, oh, you say these things because you're a racist. Now, they would never bother to hit the button on their computer or on their phone a couple of times and go see the full context of what I said for 15 minutes at the beginning of the show on Monday. They would never do that. Uh, <laughs> but they'll take they'll they'll start to listen to it and they, and they don't even hear what I'm saying. They just automatically say you're a racist, you're a white supremacist. When I well, when Joe Biden says the biggest threat to uh, America is white supremacy, and I call that out, yeah, I, I think I have a right to talk about that. But immediately, rather than doing the research. And finding the context and thinking critically, people are just going to say, oh, well, you, you think that because you're a racist. Mm. Well, that's, that's stupid logic. You were told to believe that. You were told to spout that narrative. Um, nobody that actually knows me thinks I'm a racist. Um, literally no one. There's a reason. Because I'm not. <laughs> and most of the people you know aren't either. But you were told that that narrative works. You were told that that will get you somewhere in the argument, that it will further your cause along. And, and let's, say people, let's say people across America, let's say they are racists. Let's say they are. Well, why aren't all these, all these white people, I mean, they, they make up, what, 70% of the population, 65% of the population? Why aren't they out there eradicating the black community? Why aren't they? I mean, they got all the guns and they hate blacks. Why aren't they out there doing it? Well, because they're not. That's the point. You're talking about a subset of a subset of a fringe community. It doesn't exist. But the media told you to make it prevalent, and the only place it's prevalent is in your bullshit conversation and stupid online arguments. Learn to think critically, people. Learn to think critically. All right, been talking to you now about uh, Texas Superfoods. Uh, Texas Superfoods is what you get when a naturopathic doctor like Dennis Black, who's not only a Texan and a veteran, but he's an expert in helping people get healthier. Uh, this is what happens when he put his, minds, his mind into helping make your diet better. Texas Superfoods is vine ripe and antioxidant rich. It uses raw fruits and vegetables. And whether you're using it in capsule or powder form, you're going to get all the benefits of putting those right nutrients uh, from the right fruits and vegetables into your body. I don't eat right all the time. It's true. And neither do you. So stop pretending that you do and you don't need this. You need it. Now, the beautiful thing is in this day and age, you could supplement your diet with healthy things like Texas Superfood and go on about your day a little bit healthier and rest easy in your mind. I take Texas Superfoods. That's why I'm so strong and smart. <laughs> And I feel great. Listen, I don't worry so much about my diet because I know that with Texas Superfoods, my body has what it needs to keep me functioning at my best. So give them a try today. TexasSuperfood.com. TexasSuperfood.com. We'll be right back. Hey guys, welcome back. I know that we are living in a time of uncertainty and chaos, and at some point in time, you'd like to be able to ask some questions to people who are on the inside who actually have the power to do something about the nonsense that we see happening in Washington, D.C. that's directly controlling your life. 
So I want you to join me in welcoming to the Chad Prather Show my friend uh, from the great state of Colorado, Congresswoman Lauren Boebert. How are you? Welcome to the program. Uh, I, I think we're doing pretty good. I obviously always want to do better. I want to be more aggressive. I want to be issuing more subpoenas. I want to bring uh, these people who are destroying our country and before Congress and um, force them to answer um, to uh, all of the corruption that is taking place. Um, however, we have given Kevin McCarthy, Speaker McCarthy, the tools to be a really effective speaker. And um, so far, so good. Um, but we still have a lot of work to do. And I want to focus on the oversight hearings. I want to focus on the hearings that are taking place in the, ju in the uh, Judiciary Committee or in the weaponization of the Federal Government Committee. And that's one of the things we fought for in the Speaker's race was to establish that committee. And I want to make sure that um, they're weighty and have teeth uh, that, that can actually um, take chunks out of what they're doing and, and help get our nation back on um, on back on path, right? Back yeah. on um, the, the right path. But what I really want to see right now, Chad, I want to see articles of impeachment brought before the committee for Secretary Mayorkas. Uh, what is happening at our southern border is an absolute disgrace. And that, I think, needs to be our um, number one focus. Uh, we have the power to direct the narrative and expose what's going on, especially in these committees. And um, this is something that we need to focus on. Um, there's a lot of good legislation that we're going to pass out of the House that isn't going to pass the Senate and won't be signed by Geriatric Joe in the White House. So let's do something that actually will show the American people um, that we mean business when we take back um, the Senate and the White House in 2024. Well, I, I agree with you, and I, I think that uh, I, I trust in your optimism as well for 2024. I think that we have a hard road in front of us, but I think it's uh, it's one that we can win. And uh, thanks to people like yourself who have fought hard to expose some of the things that have remained hidden for a long time, I think we're seeing some victories happen uh, a little along the way. You know, with the lifting of Title 42, we see, you know, Joe Biden, they, they catch him on a bicycle the other day and he's, he, you know, bumbles around a little bit about how he's not going to go down to the southern border. It would be a distraction at this point. And he says it's going better than, than the media thought that it would go. Uh, Mayorkas has consistently said it's not a surge, but they have it under control. It's not under control. What what is the what is the attitude here? I mean, why why the the head in the sand attitude towards what's going on? I mean, this is this is affecting everybody across the country. Particularly, I have some strong feelings as a Texan. What I see happening at our southern border. Uh, what what can we do at this point? Well, first of all, I'm glad that Joe Biden admitted that he's a distraction. Uh, so that that's one step. Um, but this is intentional. Um, the people who are in charge of operational security at the southern border, operational control, they've had it before. Secretary Mayorkas has been in um, uh, in an office that had operational um, security of the southern border, and he's refusing to do so. Joe Biden completely failed to secure the southern border. In fact, he's the one who opened it up since his mm. first day in office. And Biden has aggressively pushed for his radical open border policies. And under these same policies, America has seen the absolute worst border crisis in American history. We have over 5 million illegals crossing our border. Mm. Our heroic border agents have seized over 14,000 pounds of fentanyl. That's, that's just what they've seized, not the other stuff that's coming through that they don't know about. And what they've seized alone is enough to kill 3.1 billion people. That's mm. billion people. And, and this isn't just a drug crisis that's killing our children, it, killing uh, hundreds of Americans every day. This is a humanitarian crisis. There are young women um, and mothers um, uh, that are suffering down there. Mothers are giving their daughters plan B as they start their journey across the border because they expect their daughters to be raped on their way to America. And, and just recently, a child died in custody. This is uh, a national security crisis. And um, in just the first six months of 2023, 80 illegal aliens whose names appear on the terrorist watch list have been stopped. Now, again, that's just the ones that have been stopped. How many more have come in that we don't know about that are gotaways? And um, I mean, just that number alone, that's more than the past five years combined that we've seen. I think there were five 
more terrorists on the uh, FBI's watch list um, that we caught just this past Monday. Mm. So um, simply put, Joe Biden is inviting terrorists into our nation while turning his head um, to communities across our country. Yeah. It's a horrible situation. Uh, one more thing before I let you go. I know you're busy. I, you know, with the findings of, of this now revealed Durham report, uh, you know, we saw now that uh, Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene is is, you know, issuing articles of impeachment for Christopher Wray, the head of the FBI. Are we going to do anything? I think that's the question on the minds of Americans now. Will anybody at this point be held accountable with any of these findings? I mean, we've been called conspiracy theorists, insurrectionists, all of these things that we've been called. And what I see happening is treasonous and, and traitorous. And we know there won't even be an apology, but will there be any consequences? Uh, that's what we are pushing for. Um, that's why I said these um, the, the work that we're doing in committees is, is so important mm -hmm. to expose what's going on so we can hold them to account. Um, I don't want another Benghazi show pony committee hearing. Uh, I want there to be um, referrals sent to the DOJ. I, I want uh, President Trump to be in the White House to have yeah. his DOJ yeah. um, actually look into that. But it's really difficult when all of these actors are in the very agencies that are, are supposed to um, be the ones that we hold uh, the, the actual corrupt um, politicians and, and everyone else accountable. And they're the ones who are actually in these offices. Um, the FBI failed to uphold their mission of strict uh, fidelity to the law. The report um, also condemned the FBI for lacking any review process for uh, evaluating um, politically charged information received from Clinton's political operatives. Uh, this is nothing but treason, mm. Chad. And mm. the Durham report reveals uh, outrageous levels of corruption, and it makes it clear that the FBI targeted President Trump to help Crooked Hillary win an election. I think he's retired that name. Uh, it's now Crooked Biden. He said he's given it to him. But I mean, this is this is what the FBI um, was doing. And, and I mean, I would call this treason. I would call this election interference. The mainstream media ran with it. Obama was briefed on it. Uh, Joe Biden was briefed on it. Hillary Clinton obviously knew. Uh, there has to be accountability here. And uh, we're going to do everything that we can to make sure that it happens. Unfortunately, we're not the ones to put the cuffs on them. Um, and haul them away, but we can lay it all out there to to encourage that to happen. Mm. Well, our uh, our support is with you as you pursue that. A Congresswoman from Colorado, Lauren Boebert, thank you so much for your time. I know it is a trying time, and it's also a trying time for you. Our prayers are with you, and uh, God bless you, my friend. Thank you. Appreciate that, Chad. Thank you. Take care. All right, guys, cleaning guns is just one of those necessary, necessary hassles in life. Personally, I hate it. It's a dirty job. It takes a lot of time, but you got to do it. The patches are messy. That rope cleaning element like the boar snake, it's, it uses that two-color pattern, which hides a lot of the dirt when it comes through the barrel. That's not good enough. Well, fortunately, I have found a much better solution, and it is Barrel Buddy. Barrel Buddy compresses to fill the interior of your gun's barrel, making sure to clean the rifling grooves, and it comes in seven different sizes to match any caliber firearm. Barrel Buddy is composed of polymers that don't leave behind residual particles, so it's safer, too. So it's an amazing concept. It cleans by scrubbing and collecting particulates, then absorbs any remaining residue and buffs the interior surface clean. You can even lubricate your firearm while you're cleaning. Cleaning your gun has never, uh, it's, it's never been more important than right now because you need your guns. Trust me, you do. Uh, and it's a really important step in being a responsible gun owner. Barrel Buddy is a totally new concept and a better way to take care of your firearm. So get some today. You're going to love them. Go to BarrelBuddy.com. That's BarrelBuddy.com. And we'll be right back. You know, every week I like to bring you uh, what I call the cisgender award or the sissy. <laughs> uh, Chris had a good nomination this week for the sissy. You got it. The cisgender award. Uh, this was a baseball game. And uh, this uh, umpire, do we have the clip for that? All right. Play that clip right there. So here's, here's this baseball game. And all of a sudden, uh, uh, look at this. Wow, what's going on? You watching this? There was a dust devil. It's a freak dust devil. Blow, just, woo, just swarms. It's like this catcher was trying to be taken to heaven right here. It just, just got around him. And uh, he just was frozen. He didn't know what was going on. He was suddenly in a, a dirt tornado. 
And the umpire just runs over there, grabs him, and snatches him out of there. And uh, he saved his life. Hang on. Oh, got to sneeze. <laughs> I hate when that happens. Ah, that's what happens when you get in a dirt devil right there. You get in a dust devil. It, just watching that made me sneeze. The kid did kind of react like he was about to get, like, taken off to. He thought he was gone. Yeah, he thought he was leaving Kansas, like yeah. Dorothy. So that was Jacksonville, Florida. The Fort Carolina Athletic Association Park. Uh, eight and under teams. They were uh, playing Mother's Day tournament because Little League sucks now. The fact that they're playing on Mother's Day. Um, I swear to God, you guys, you, you, y'all really need to get control of these organizations. I mean, play 300 games a week in uh, keeping kids up to 11 o'clock at night playing ball. Uh, but anyway, it's fourth inning. Indians were looking to add to their one-run lead. And bam, there it comes. Uh, so uh, the kid said, I couldn't breathe that much, so I held my breath, and I felt like I, I couldn't touch the ground, so I kind of lifted up a little bit. <laughs> You're not in Kansas anymore, kid. Wow. Uh, uh, so anyway, 17-year-old uh, Aiden Wiles, a junior in high school who earns a few dollars umpiring youth baseball games in his free time. He uh, jumped in there and uh, he said, I saw him, freaked out, just like couldn't find his way out, Wiles explained, and I knew his little body couldn't handle it, so I rushed in and got him. You're a hero, Aiden. A hero named Aiden. There you go. You have a girly name, but you get the cisgender award. You, my friend, get the, this week's sissy. Aiden Wiles, 17 years old. That's right. I love it. Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, you don't get a prize, but but you do get an honorable mention right there. Good job. Kid thought he was gone, man. Uh, there were only two Democrats this week that voted against the resolution honoring police. Um, and they used uh, Trump in January 6th as a justification. So two Democratic lawmakers are defending themselves after they voted against a resolution to honor law enforcement. Uh, that was House uh, uh, Resolution 363 uh, to support law enforcement for National Police Week, which uh, began on Sunday but runs through Saturday. It just recognizes the necessity of police officers and their need for resources and acts of heroism. Two lawmakers voted against the uh, resolution. That was uh, – any guesses? Any guesses on what two pieces of absolute excrement? Uh, well, it was Rashida Tlaib and Cori Bush. Cory Bush, uh, members of the squad. Washington, D.C. needs a whole different type of squad these days. Uh, they justified their vote in a statement on Tuesday. They accused Republicans of gaslighting the public about law enforcement. And, of course, they talked about J6 and Trump. Uh, so this resolution is not a referendum on support for the safety of first responders. It's a document intended to advance Republicans' false narrative around supporting law enforcement and gaslight the public about where they stand. Let's not forget that Republicans are the party of insurrection. It was Republican politicians who enabled January 6th by peddling lies about the election. Uh, well, you're a traitor. You're a traitor. All right? So, um, and this right there just proves the fact but there's bad cops ah. there's bad sex too but i don't turn any of it down all right i'm willing to take the good with the bad because the bad is is very few and far between out there so um screw them cory bush rashida talib she is she the head shaved one or is that the other one that's the head shaved one yeah they married her brother allegedly uh, that's that's ilhan omar Oh, you're thinking about Ariana Presley. Ariana Presley's yeah. the bald one. Rashida Tlaib is the turban. Yeah. Isn't she? No, no, no. That's Ilhan Omar. Oh, that's Ilhan Omar. Rashida, Rashida Tlaib, Tlaib is... is the one who said we're going to impeach the mother. Yeah, there you go. There we go. I'm getting these fools straight. There you go. I'm getting these fools straight. I mean, they they all... all start to look alike to me. If they're interchangeable for the most yeah. part. Let's be honest. They are interchangeable. Yeah. You just plug one up take take a you know a butt plug out of one of them and stick it in the other one and that one starts talking yeah they just trade weaves they do and uh you know disney worker was arrested on child porn charges and was making posts about hot teens um yeah he uploaded some pictures of a of a underage friend's daughter saying he wanted to impregnate her uh this was an employee of uh, 20 years there at disney 
in 20 years, 20 years, uh, I had a Dropbox account that contained several files of children under 10 having sex with adult men. I really don't need, need you know, like they booked him at the Orange County Jail. I really don't really see why we need to um, like prolong that life any longer. Just roll that wood chipper right out there and uh, feet first, start one leg at a time. Um, oh, yeah. He allegedly shared about 155 posts on the sites, including several photos of young girls and women he claims he knows. Mm, anyway, I won't go into some other details, but they're pretty graphic. So, uh, yeah. The um, Speaking of Florida, Florida has sent 800 soldiers, 300 law enforcement officers to help secure the U.S. border in Texas. Thank you. We need them. Governor Ron DeSantis. Um, and so that's 1,100 assets to uh, Texas to assist Governor Greg Abbott in combating the illegal immigration crisis that Joe Biden has caused on the southern border with his policies. We'll see if it does any good. Uh, again, because if you don't put any teeth in the lion's mouth, I mean, it's kind of hard to expect him to do a whole lot of good. So uh, what we're seeing right now is still an, a complete and total invasion at the southern border of Texas. Um, you know, Joe uh, Greg Abbott, I should say, is consistently bragging about busing uh, illegal migrants to other parts of the country, moving them further into the interior. I understand that you tried to make a point, but you're continuing to make that point, and I don't think that's helping very much. So, um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but uh, we'll, we'll get into it some more in the next segment. But uh, the transgender influencers, all these partnerships, you know, you know they, were, they were hiring all these transgender influencers to push their products and stuff. Yeah, that's dropping. That's dropping. Uh, nobody wants to be a Bud Light anymore. They, they really don't want to be a Bud Light. I was driving down the road the other day. I went on and ordered a Jace case from Jace Medical. Uh, Jace Medical is the same company that, uh, that brought you the Jace case, and now they got this thing called Jace Daily. Uh, it's a prescription supply service that allows you to get up to a 12-month backup supply of your prescription medication in case of emergency. And it will cover a whole bunch of medication, things like cholesterol, diabetes, heart health, uh, blood pressure, mental health, and a whole lot more. Uh, it's absolutely the ultimate must-buy in family preparedness. Your order is reviewed by a certified healthcare professional and delivered right to your door. Now, I recently spoke to Sean Rowland on this show who founded Jace Medical, and he explained that being prepared medically is much more than just having access to antibiotics, especially when you learn that all your medications are produced overseas. He said the peace of mind gained by having this kind of long-term supply of your vital medications can't be overstated. So for your sake and your family's sake, you need to be prepared. Go to jacemedical.com, enter code C-H-A-D, I spell it Chad, that's Jace, J-A-S-E, medical.com and uh enter promo code chad at checkout for a discount on your order that's promo code chad at jacemedical.com we'll be right back oh boy oh boy oh boy um eric adams uh who is the mayor of new york um he had this to say about uh the border crisis and uh, Joe Biden, play the clip. Where the heck job. is the president of the United States? Uh, that, that is a good question. And I think we all should be asking, uh, why is this happening to a city that was turning itself around and will continue to do so? Uh, this should not be happening to New York City, Chicago, Los Angeles, and the other big northern cities. And really, it should not be happening to El Paso or Brownsville, Texas. Right. No city should be carrying this burden. It's a national problem, and it needs a national solution. That's right. Spread them Mexicans out, man. It got to be everywhere. <laughs> Senegalese and Ethiopians and Chinese, Ecuadorians, Haitians. They're all down there. Spread them out. Eric Adams don't want them all. Now, the only mayor in America who has consistently said we'll take them is the, is the mayor of Philadelphia. Yeah. He's like, let's go. He wants to see that's, that's power at all costs. We're going to make sure we stay in power. We're going to welcome everyone. We'll overpopulate our city. We will just absolutely run it into the ground. And there's a lot of people in Philadelphia that ain't liking that, though. Philadelphians are, one, assholes. Uh, they, they're not happy people. 
And they they like they literally take great pride in being jackasses. They're not going to take well to this. They're not. So uh, we'll see how that little sh- little soiree plays out as the days go by. But poor old Eric Adams, man, just doing the best he can. I actually love watching when Democrats get eaten up by Democrat policies. When it just when you just it's just a perfect example of how you just get devoured by the policies that you've helped create and perpetuate. Just whoop, just eat you right up. Eat you right up. For instance, again, I alluded to it in the last segment, uh, you know, the transgender influencers out there. And this is a minor thing compared to uh, illegal migrants invading countries and cities. But, uh, you know, these partnerships out there, because these companies out there paying, were paying these transgender influencers, which, again, who I don't think are truly transgender. You know what I want to do, Chris and Brandon? What, what I want to do? I want to do a segment on the real face of transgenderism. I want to show you the real face of transgenderism. It doesn't look like Jeffrey Marsh. It does not look like it does not look like Dylan Mulvaney. Now I'm sure. I promise you. It looks more like that guy who's screaming, "Ma'am! It's ma'am!" That's what it that's what it looks like. Um it looks like mental derangement. Uh, it's not a pretty picture. These are people that have been made up and beautified and skinnified and glorified by corporate America. But uh, transgender influencer Rose Montoya has experienced a downtick in partnership opportunities after the boycott of Bud Light over its commemorative can sent to Dylan Mulvaney in April. See, they're getting devoured. They're getting devoured by their own. That's a dude right there. If you see that picture, that's a guy. Uh, typically flooded with dozens of emails in advance of Pride Month, Montoya told Newsweek uh, she, I'm saying that in quotations for those of you that are listening, received less than a dozen requests so far. Here it goes. This is from Newsweek. Hatred towards the transgender community has been on the rise since March after a transgender shooter killed six people in Nashville. Um, yeah, that's that's the thing right there it's hatred towards the transgender community now now do you see now let's go back to what barack obama said a little while ago about controlling all these voices right these voices that it's a divided media and so they they literally with with unadulterated shame they print this shit where they say hatred towards the transgender community we don't we don't hate you we don't hate you we think you are mocking a mental illness, and we're calling it what it is. We're telling you that you are full of shit whenever you put a transgender or a biological male with boobs on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Like, we're calling that out. I mean, it's like, it's like Sports Illustrated said, you know, Bud Light was like, oh, nobody can do worse than us in marketing, and tra- Sports Illustrated said, Hold my beer. And they handed him a Bud Light. <laughs> so, you know, it's not hatred. We'll ridicule it and we'll call it insanity because that's what it is. But, um, yeah, they, they should. You know what we should do? We should have, we should have a, a battle royale of the trannies. Like what they should do is they should just all get in the octagon, you know, tits and dicks everywhere. And they just all go after Dylan Mulvaney and let, let's see who's the, who's the biggest man among them. You know, my my money is going to be on that 220 pound power lifter that won that national championship uh, or whatever it was that that title. I, I'm putting my money on that moose and see what happens it's right funny there. You brought that up because uh, was it Barstool had a rough and rowdy yeah. like a week or two ago where they had two trans women fighting yeah. in the ring. And I'm going to be honest, a combat division, combat sports division with Big old trans woman. That yeah. would actually be pretty entertaining. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I'd watch that. That's a, that's a whole new We Are Sparta yeah. right there. <laughs> Send them in. Um, I hope they don't get their periods in the middle of battle. <laughs> Shit their pants or whatever it is they do. I don't, I don't know. There's fluids, though, apparently, because they they got a stuffed Tampax up there. But... Um, I saw that one MMA fighter who said, I have asked every transgender male, which is a biological female, he said, I'm begging 
for a transgender male to come fight me. But nobody will take him up on it. He said, I'm begging for a transgender male. I mean, this guy wants to kick a woman's ass bad. I believe it was uh, Jake Shields. That's who it was, Jake yeah. Shields. And so he was like begging, I want a piece of you. Yeah. And nobody will take him up on the fight. No, I think he said he'd fight 10 back to back. Yeah, like yeah. come on. Like like that meme that's going around of the Irish guy that's got a suit and tie or the coat and tie, the vest and tie on, yeah, yeah. and the two guys are coming, <laughs> and he's just whooping their ass in the yeah. ring. The two boys are coming at him. <laughs> No, there's plenty of biological males that identify as transgender females that'll get in the ring with another biological female. But it's funny how they just won't show up if they were born with a vagine. A vagine. Yeah, I wonder if there's something in this perfectly normal book about that. Like, can, let's see, your assigned gender, um, you were labeled at birth, uh, if you were born with a vagine and the doctor said you're a female, but now you've decided to label yourself as a male, you still shouldn't get in the ring with Jake Shields because you will die. That's right here in the book. Yeah, it's in, it's in what is sex right here. Uh, this, this thing's insane, man. They got pictures of kids masturbating in here. They do. They do. They got anal sex. Uh, they're showing. Uh, they showing sexual positions right here. There's there's a, a boy and a girl, or at least that's how they label themselves. There's a girl and a girl. They're scissoring. They are. It's for ten year olds. We're supposed to be able to show this, right? We're supposed to be able to show this. This is in the middle school libraries. Uh, and not only that, it's a white girl and a black girl, or that's how they label themselves. That's how the author of the book chose to label them, uh, white on black, because that's woke. Oh, oh, and then there's, there's uh, two boys doing butt stuff at the bottom. One of them are black, and one of them's white, which is, hey, listen, give it to the white dude, because he's taking it from behind from the black dude. And let me just say, that's a bold move. That's a bold move right there. Um, and that's, but that's your 10-year-olds are reading that. Your 10-year-olds have access to this right here. And if they have access to it, then certainly we should be able to talk about it and show it. Right? Right here. That's fair. And, um, yeah, sexual intercourse. I mean, this is what your, this is what your 10-year-old should be reading. Sexual intercourse is having sex uh, can involve the penis and the vagina or the mouth and the genitals or the penis and the anus. After sexual intercourse that involves the vagina and the penis, a pregnancy can begin. Oh, wait. wait what? what? I didn't know that was possible. Or I didn't know that was the only way that was possible. Uh, but there are many ways that a person can protect oneself from becoming pregnant and having a baby. Um, sex is a lot of things. Feelings, thoughts. Sex is a desire to be very close to someone. Sex is touching the sexual parts of the body. Sex is intercourse. Sex is making babies. Sex is uh, the label most babies are given at birth. See, none of that is true, by the way. All this stuff. Uh, sex is not making babies. Baking babies can be a product of having sex. Um, and um, yeah, so it just goes on and on. Then there's a whole chapter five. Who we are, straight, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, questioning, plus. Yeah. People do not choose uh, their sexual orientation. Often it takes time for kids and for adults to figure out their sexual orientation. I'm still thinking about it. I mean, I still, they got a whole deal. Speaking of uh, the, 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 the Greeks, they got a whole deal about how um, it was cool uh, if, if you were in Sparta to be gay and in the army because then you would fight harder in order to impress your lover who was in the same legion. So uh, they really want, they wanted gay soldiers. That's what they wanted. That's right here in this book, man. Didn't the Greeks also historically have a bit of a penchant for uh, boys? Pedophiles? Yeah, yeah. They were very, they were very uh, much about having boys. Yeah, not the best example to be like, we're not groomers. Look at the Greeks. Yeah, a lot of stuff. <laughs> These people are really focused on the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, rainbow shit. So uh, they got a whole chapter dedicated to genders and bathrooms, man. But they took out, I don't know if I missed it, but they got a whole part in there about masturbation and they're showing people getting after it. Kids getting after it, by the way.
You say, Chad, enough, enough, enough. Yeah, it's enough. It is enough. But this is, this is go to your school board and uh, read this book to them. And I guarantee you they turn your microphone off. But they'll let your kids read it in the damn library. All right, big tech and big data have shown us time after time that they're, uh, they're not on our side. Yes, we have given them access to record our personal lives 24-7 through our phones. Even when your phone is off, the microphones and the cameras and the location trackers are still working. And that's just the tech people. What about your personal security when it comes to the crazy ex or somebody stalking you or even trying to blackmail you? Trust me, it happens. Trust me. It happens. Uh, and it happens more than you might think. This is why I use Refuge Ghost Sleeve. It's made in America from American buffalo leather, and it blocks 5G signals that other Faraday sleeves miss, and the only Faraday sleeve that blocks signal and sound. Now, they added uh, sound blocking panels on each side that keep conversations private. It's not some clunky metal box. It looks cool. It's like a nice little wallet. And it's easy to put your phone in and take out throughout the day whenever you want privacy. You can't be too careful these days. And the Refuge Ghost Sleeve can help keep you safe. So visit refugeprivacy.com today. Use promo code CHAD. I spell it CHAD. Save 10% on your order. That's refugeprivacy.com. And use promo code CHAD for 10% off. We'll be right back. Oh, man, oh, man. All right. I'm going to be uh, bouncing around the country. I want you to come see me, chadpratherlive.com. I just threw out a bunch of dates with more coming. Uh, I'm calling it a small town tour 2023. And there's a couple of big ones that are thrown in there, but not very big. So um, next week, I'll be outside uh, Tampa, Florida, Wesley Chapel at Side Splitters. I love going to those clubs, and I hope uh, that you will pick one to come to. I'm there for two nights on the 26th and 27th. That's a Friday, Saturday night. Two shows, both nights, one at 7, one at 9.30. That's a late one, but uh, it's going to be a party. So come hang out with us, man. And if you're uh, if you're in the Fort Worth area, bounce down to Godly, Texas. Go to Del Norte Tacos. Hang out with us. We're going to have, I don't know, six, 700 of our closest friends down there for uh, me and the Ragamuffins. We're going to have a blast this Saturday night. So uh, check us out. Do not miss Overtime with my buddy uh, Clint Emerson. We got Clint on Overtime this week. Uh, he's going to tell you how to survive in this nonsense, okay? I mean, take matters into your own hands as a uh, as a former badass Navy SEAL. And uh, we're going to talk to him. He's a frequent guest on the show, and you know you love him. So, uh, Chris and Brandon and George, thank you guys for a wonderful week, and thank you guys. Do not forget, go to where podcasts are offered. Please leave me a five-star rating. It's what I deserve, and leave a good review. Do that, okay? And then hit the notification button. Go over to YouTube. You're like, I don't like YouTube. Do it. Go over there and hit the little bell, the notification, all right? Subscribe, blazetv.com slash chat. Use promo code chat. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Bye.